coming, I will discuss today a very technical result that we hope to be able to apply um, to concrete cases in um, quantum foundations. So this is a joint work with Robert Ferber and Sam Staten, who used to be at Hadbard University with me until they decided that the weather wasn't bad enough in Nymeca. So, um, I will start a bit of category theory by explaining my main results and then give key steps to my proof to then keep on going by um, giving you a glimpse of a possible application of this technical result. So, let's have the main result. Um, in this talk, I will discuss three different categories. The category of double starship bars with complete positive maps, the categories of natural numbers seen as um, the, the algebras of n by n matrices, um, complex value matrices, and complex positive map between them, and the category of set. So our result is a, is a relationship between those two categories through this functor. So there is a home set functor from the upper category of the Wilson algebra with complete positive maps to the category of three sheaves on matrix algebra. And we were able to prove that this functor is full and faithful. So, the real question now is, what does it mean? And I will try to answer it, answer it to, this, to this question during this talk. Uh, but let's start by recalling some definitions that you've probably seen a couple of times uh, this week, so I won't really go into the details. But in this, in this talk, we will deal with sister algebras, which are algebras of physical observable. And the intuition behind this is that um, they represent me measurable um, quantities of a quantum system. So I will also consider matrix algebras, um, which are specific system algebras, um, which, which are, with, whose elements are made from n by n complex matrices. So you can um, transfer them and get another matrix algebra. And the idea is that any of them, so if you take um, the sister algebra M K, it represents K possibly on top of copies of the complex numbers. So you can also consider the N by matrices whose entries are in another sister algebra A. And the intuition behind it is that if you see them as vector spaces, M K of A is just uh, the tensor of M K and A. So I've mostly discussed, I've, I've mostly talked about objects object so far, but we also need to consider maps. Um, if you consider a linear map between two sister algebras, um, you can define it to be completely positive by considering um, a function which sends matrices whose entries are in A to matrices with entries in B by just applying to every entry your linear function map. So the intuition behind it is that complete positive map corresponds to quantum channels. Quantum channels are communication channels which are supposed to uh, represent the way quantum information is transmitted. So complete positivity is really important in quantum computation for two particular reasons. When you have a particular big system, you sometimes want to be able to um, cut it into multiple subsystems and then run your operations, um, your quantum operations in parallel on, uh, on that system. And you also want to be able, when you have a, a quantum system, to just run an operation on a particular uh, subsystem of this, of this quantum system. So that's, that's what, what complete positivity introduces, because this is the way we express compositionality in uh, quantum computation. So, more than sister algebras, I would be interested in this talk in double star algebras, which are sister algebras with uh, particularly nice domain theoretic properties. For example, if you consider the positive of elements below the unit, um, they constitute the DCPO. So, double star algebras encompass all finite dimensional sister algebras, all bounded operators on, the on any arbitrary Hilbert space and some of our examples. And in this talk, I will particularly focus on W star algebra, uh, on the category of W star algebra and complete positive map and the category of W 
hydrogen drugs and positive maps. So one could wonder, we already have um, this finite dimensional system algebra, so what should we care about what's in finite dimensional? And that's what I'm going to talk about right now. So I came up with four arguments that you probably heard um, this week. The first one being that if you stop restricting yourself to finite dimensional system algebra and consider the full power of the theory of all of operator algebras as it has been uh, st heavily studied in the past century, um, you, you are able to get the full scope of possibilities and manipulation you can have on the structures. And this gives you a very powerful theorem to apply in the semantics of programming languages, for example. Um, another argument is that infinite dimensionality arises in a quantum field theory which is probably some notion that some of you might be familiar with. And another one is that, arguably, you, you, could, um, you could say that if we are to build a quantum computer, uh, this register will involve, in some way, infinite dimensional structures, for example, which is the case in proposal of um, photonic-based uh, quantum, quantum, quantum computation. And the fourth argument is that uh, in the past few years there has been a lot of efforts to uh, consider infinite dimensionality um, in quantum, in, for quantum programming languages. So here I will recall my main results, which um, relates uh, with three categories. And what does it mean? It means that we have a bijection between maps between complete positive map between WS algebras and natural transformations on um, defined between three sheaves on matrix algebra. But I haven't said much outside of category about what this means. So um, this really means that matrix algebras are dense in WS algebras, which is kind of an, a category theoretic analogy with topology where rational numbers are dense in the reals. So, more concretely, uh, this means that all the Bristol algebras are canonical columns of the diagram of matrix algebras and complete positive map. But this is not enough to recover the physical intuition behind this result. And that's why I believe that what this result truly really means is that in operator theoretic uh, categorical quantum foundations, finite dimensional structures can be approximated by uh, infinite dimensional. Uh, no. <laughs> finite dimensional structures can approximate an infinite dimensional quantum part. Sorry, I'm um, I will come back to this later. So, for those who are interested in knowing the key step of a proof, I will now proceed to give some of them. So, there are Three key steps for the proof. I unfortunately don't have enough time to um, explain to you how we obtain this result, which is two and a half page long. Um, so the first step is to establish a functor between the, the category of the research and complete positive, and complete positive maps and functors from matrix algebra to the very algebra. Then one needs to notice that the normal positive linear functional uh, functor is full and faithful. And by combining the two and making some uh, category abstract nonsense over it and using this third fact that natural maps uh, in uh, the category of pre sheaves on matrix algebras uh, correspond to cone homomorphisms. And this is due to the fact that, the, which is a bit surprising to me, but the category of finite dimensional uh, commutative sister algebras correspond to the log theory of uh, cones. And this is how we obtain our result. So I will now proceed to explain quickly those three key steps. So the first one, uh, I actually had a talk about it last year, where I explained that the barista algebras can be decomposed in an index family of sister algebras in general can be decomposed in an index family of sister algebras by just sending every sister algebra to the 
plummy form by um, all its n by n matrices indexed, uh, whose entries are in fact the first algebra, in fact sister algebra. So in the same way, you can just kind of decompose the complete Poisson map into all uh, all the, the, ma the matrices, uh, the map of matrices that it induces. Um, and we're able to prove that <coughs> this construction is, is full and faithful. This function is full and faithful. So faithfulness was quite obvious, but fullness was more important. Um, we have stuff for why and find out accidentally by reading some papers about the Dalek's calculus that we could make a clever use of stabilizer um, states to uh, obtain the whole, the whole record. So the second step, which is probably uh, well known for some of you, was to prove that, um, when, that, that the, there is the normal possibly in a functional functor is full and faithful. So a set of normal possible functionals is uh, basically uh, a set of all maps from the de Brewster algebra A to the complex number. So it's a notion of state. And we're able to prove that if you consider them, um, if you consider all those possibly in a function mode, they form a cone, which gives us a full and faithful functor from the category of the Brewster algebra and positive maps, the positive category of the Brewster algebra and positive maps to the category of cones. Um, then, last trick, um, since the Karabi envelope of the category of matrix algebra and complete positive maps is in, included in includes uh, the category of finite dimensional system algebras. We are able to prove that there is an equivalence between pre sheaves on matrix algebras and pre sheaves on finite dimensional system algebras. And using the fact that um, the category of commutative finite dimensional system algebras correspond to the Logan theory of cones, we are able to prove um, that the category of cones is a full subcategory of the pre sheaves of the categories of Sheaves on finite dimensional uh, commutative system algebras. And this was enough to prove that the natural maps involved in uh, a functor of our result correspond to quantum homomorphism. So, before investigating how our work has some ties with um, the kind of thing that people uh, are doing in the QPL community, I'll um, try to give you a glimpse of what we're planning to do next. So, first, I think we ought to address, uh, to address the fact that we only have, um, we, we only managed to have a, a standard polymer construction, but we did not prove any property on it. We don't know if it's a filtered polymer. We don't know if it's, um, uh, if it's a directed polymer. And um, we do not, to, to know how much uh, finite dimensional structures can approximate the finite dimensional ones, we need to be able to describe precisely how this construction is, is done. So another line of work would be to characterize which pre sheaves arise in the construction, and especially which pre sheaves correspond to concrete diverse algebras. And finally, it's not the only attempt to consider um, approximation of infinite dimensional structures by infinite dimensional ones, and we should be able to um, make a connection with prior work by, for example, the bias traits. Um, finally, um, we realized that with this pre shift construction, we were able to consider a new tensor product for diverse algebra for which we don't know so far if it corresponds to a non-constriction or if it's totally uh, a new um, tensor product for the Bruce algebra, which would be quite surprising. So that's something that we're going to investigate. But I want to spend the last minutes I have during this talk to focus on related work. So it's not the first time that people have been dealing with columns in operator theory. For example, uh, Bradley in the 70s proved that Approximate finite system algebras are limits of directed diagrams of finite dimensional system algebras in some models. And there's been extensive work on this kind of results in operator theory. But in our case,
hackers are more interested in more concrete applications to, for example, quantum programming languages, because it's increasingly common to define computational constructs and then subcategories um, in uh, the same actions of programming languages. For example, I'm pointing out to a paper that I found in 2010. Um, another very interesting connection is that uh, it's not the first time that the category of pre sheaves um, is used for the semantics of quantum computation. In particular, in, um, Octavio Malab and his colleague managed to prove that you can obtain a model of um, the quantum matter calculus with pre sheaves of uh, finite sequences of finite dimensional Hilbert spaces. So, our result kind of make a link between their proposal and a Another plenty question is that uh, this category NAT CP is actually familiar to some of you. You've seen it before, it's just we're using a different name. But in um, the, this joint work between Benoit Valiron, Peter Salinger, and Michele Pagani, um, byproduct completion of the category of matrix algebras was used as a model for high order quantum computation. And this was enough to get recursive types for. Um, to express lists, trees, and all those kind of basic recursive types. So, one pending question is, what kind of object of this byproduct completion correspond to concrete double star algebras? And we hope that our result will help us shed a light on uh, uh, this issue. Um, another subject in which I'm less familiar with trying to learn uh, to learn more about it is uh, contextuality. So after a few discussions with um, some of the people in the field we realized that there might be some application of our work to contextuality, mainly because density theorems uh, also appear in contextuality. So for example, it was proven last year that Boolean algebras are dense in effect algebras. And similarly it was proved this year that compact house of spaces are dense in piecewise system algebras. So the whole idea of those two work is to consider that the base category be the classical picture on, um, in your context relative framework. And we've been trying recently to apply to system algebras and diverse algebras, but unfortunately we've been unable to understand how to consider the tensor on the burst algebras in the same way that people consider the tensor on, um, on effect algebras. So I'm open to suggestions if you have any. Um, finally, we've been trying to broaden our perspective by considering topological vector spaces, which offer a class of structures for quantum computation, which is way larger than um, sister algebras and the burst algebras. And Namely, we were able to, so we've been able to define a notion of um, closure of a category under its um, matrices, which <coughs> I'm sure that we can consider the notion of complete positivity or complete boundedness. So this gives us a similar result to the one we had in the W star algebraic and C star algebraic case. And thing to remember from this this result is that it gives us a way to relate in category theory operator spaces with banner spaces and operator system with order unit spaces, some structures that some of you might be familiar with uh, in the study of quantum computation. So um, at last I would like to give you a glimpse of what should be um, kept from this paper which is, since matrix algebras are dense in the burst algebras, one can consider in the operator theoretic framework that um, we can find, we, we, can, we can investigate ways to approximate infinite dimensional structures by finite dimensional ones. And we believe that there is a lot of room for concrete applications, particularly in quantum programming languages, for quantum programming languages and So we have a uh, lot of time for questions. Yes, Andy? Or maybe I misunderstood. But what are possibly entangled copies of C? M of K.
idea is that you have uh, so the idea is that you have um, a k uh, a k by k matrix, matrix whose entries are um, whose entries are complex numbers, and on your diagonal all the values are related together. Ah, I understand. Okay. So I believe that we already discussed it before, and you have different intuitions. But I'm open to suggestions if you don't find that it's part of physical intuition. I'm not sure. Peter. So in one of the slides you mentioned work with Mal Herbert, and uh, so, I think Mal, Mal Herbert's work yeah. with uh, This, this category was involved in construction. Yeah, but it was not all pre sheets, but oh, it was yeah, sure, preserving. Sure. You had to do a special pre sheets so that sure. the UNIDA embedding would actually uh, preserve whole of it. Yes. Uh, but I think, so does your construction live in that same subcategory? I think it does. Right? Uh, it just uses Yes. How much structure is preserved by the embedding? Um, like tensor, for example? I think I should have a look. Thank you. Yes? You mentioned uh, that the unit interval for the W star algebra is at least below. Yeah. Is there anything known about the way Low relation or compact element? Sorry? Is there anything known about compact elements in a distance in field? Uh, I believe that elements are compact if it's finite dimensional. Actually, you can prove that it's finite dimensional if, in, if elements are compact in that DC field. And in general, the way below relation Yeah, so the problem of the way below relation is that. Not finite dimensional. Uh, you can't. I mean, it's, you can only express it if it's finite dimensional. At least for the research words. So I have a question. You mentioned at the end topological vector spaces, which yes. is indeed a much bigger category. I was wondering if there was some programming language motivation that forced you into this wild west of uh, topological. Oh no. Uh, actually, mostly constructed me into topological vector spaces by discussing it with uh, Robert. And actually, Where are you, Robert? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, it's something that has been suggested for a while, su suggesting for a while because he might have some use. Um, so, you saw it in the studio of uh, perhaps he can't do Probabilistic computation? Any comment? The <laughs> so, so reason for the, so I think we can't really consider all topological vector spaces, but uh, the reason is that uh, normal maps can be considered if you consider the uh, W star algebras with the, the weak star topology. And this is the reason for considering things a little more general. Okay, let's, uh, if there are no more questions, let's thank Matisse again.